Good morning, KU. I'm Rachel, and this is Letty. Hello, everyone. And how's everyone's Easter weekend? How was yours? Mine was pretty cool. I went to Owen Park, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with my best friend's family, and yeah. That's yeah, it's always great when you can have a friend's house to go to when you're far away from home. Um, I went to my grandpa's house and hung out with my grandpa for a little bit and some cousins. And then came back home and had a pretty relaxing day. It yeah. was a good day Lots overall. Of candy. Yeah, it was a happy day compared to the weekend because it wasn't a very happy weekend for KU because, as everyone knows, we did not win on Saturday night. Okay, but I have so many complaints about that. That was just so sad to watch. I was upset the whole time. I cried at the end a lot. It was really sad to watch me too after that game. But I. I don't know. I, I look at the brackets and the way that everything was organized, and I'm like, I'm like, that, there is so much bias there, and I hate everything. I was, was so upset. Yeah, there was a lot of tears, a lot of anger. We had just a way harder bracket than everyone else did, and the officiating of the game was not, in my opinion, as good as it should have been. There was a lot of weird calls made. It was just a rough game to watch. It was very sad. Yeah, and the, that was not the first time the officiating was questionable. Um, during the Maryland game, I also thought that happened not only for us, but Maryland also got um, against them some weird calls. However, mm -hmm. we could pull it together against Maryland and against Villanova. That mm -hmm. um, I do, I, I'm not here to say, though, that that was our problem. I really don't think that it was the officiating that like was the biggest problem. It happened, and it really upset me, but we you didn't play as well as we had before. I know, we haven't. But also, I feel as if Devontae had such a good game. He played so hard, and I feel like he just had so many calls against him that were not solid. The last foul, when he fouled out, when he kicked the ball, but actually didn't kick the ball. I mean, there was just a lot of frustrating things to watch, and it was sad that it was Perry's last game and possibly Wayne's last game, but everyone was just really upset, and you could feel it all around KU that it was – there's a lot yeah. of sadness in the air. Everyone's really bummed. And we didn't get a rush mass street, which everyone was so ready to do. I included. I wore my tennis shoes out for the game so I could run to mass street if needed and didn't happen. That's not to say, though, that we didn't have an incredible season. Right, we did. Me particularly, I thought we, um, during mid-January, I thought that we didn't even have a shot at the conference, and then we pulled this out, and it was amazing. They, mm -hmm. The conference was just great. Uh, we also won on the championship at the end, so it was really mm -hmm. good. The fact that we won so many games in a row, that was also That's fantastic. Uh, it's really sad that the way to measure the best team in the country is by a single elimination tournament, because I definitely think we are the best team in the nation right now. Very well said. So let's all try to smile because we had a great season and celebrate how great it was and try to just look on the positive side and there's always next year that's true as we always say when bad things happen <laughs> like this that's true well we stay with us for our new segment after this where you go to college makes a statement about you this place will become a part of you your identity for life The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. I'm Amber Vandegrift, and I'm here with Lane Kofa. So, Lane, you're going to Portland later this week. Tell me a little bit about that. I am. Um, I am going to the ACES Conference, which is um, an acronym for American Copy Editor Society, and it's going to be me and a few other journalism and English students, along with uh, Lisa McClendon, and we're going to go and um, basically just go through a bunch of workshops and um, 
meet people from all over, you know, the country in different editing backgrounds and, you know, network a little bit. And basically it's just going to be a bunch of fun surrounding, you know, editing and all of that. So I'm excited. Yeah. So is editing something that you want to do professionally after you graduate? Um, I would love to. I, you know, I, I took some of Lisa's classes and those were, you know, some of my favorite classes that I've ever taken in journalism. And, you know, I, it's really neat to be able to have that kind of, um, experience and be able to look at a piece of text and just, you know, figure out what needs to be fixed to make it better. So, you know, I think that would be an awesome career to have and, you know, a lot of people do it in all kinds of different things. So it's applicable, I guess. So how did you first get into editing? Like, how did you know that you wanted to take Lisa McClendon's classes? Well, I just, I kind of just read through, you know, the little paragraph before you sign up for a class. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this might be interesting. I might take this. And a couple of them were, um, required anyway so you know I just enrolled and I was like man I really like this I could do this you know so that's kind of how I got into that so. yeah so are you excited to go to Portland I mean do you know exactly what it's gonna be like when you're there I have no idea um, I think the weather's gonna be nice um, I don't know if we'll be able to see a lot of Portland because we'll be in the conference all day but um, you know I'm really excited I've never been to Oregon before so you know it'll be a new place I guess I can cross off my list at the same yeah, time. Yeah, for so, sure, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, I don't think so. Just I'm looking forward to having a good time and learning some new stuff. Yeah, so, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining okay. us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. After this, we've got the news. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Angela Zhang. And I'm Joanna Campos. This is your Monday Good Morning KU News Update. Pope Francis celebrated Easter Mass in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican on Sunday with the message of Christian hope against blind terrorism. The, hope, the Pope recalled the victims of the recent attacks in Europe and Africa on a day of Taliban claimed responsibility for a new attack to children's playground in Pakistan. More than 65 people were killed in the, in the attack that deliberately targeted both Christians and children. Bernie Sanders was the big winners in Saturday's primaries in Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii. Sanders defends Hillary Clinton's by at least 14 percentage points in all three states, but still trails the front runner next up is Wisconsin, and Sanders has challenging Clinton to another defense before the April's fifth primary. The letdown was big as the men's basketball team fell to Villanova on Saturday night, ending the Jayhawks' season. The game went back and forth all night, but in the end, the Wildcats held off a late charge and came away with a 64-59 victory. KU finishes the year with a 33-5 record, and in the next few weeks, we will find out if any of the underclassmen will be turning pro. Kansas wasn't the only number one to one number one seed to lose the NCAA tour, tour, tournaments this weekend. Ore Oregon's and Virginia both lost as well, leaving North Carolina as the only number ones to reach the final four. Villanova's will take on Oklahoma in one summer's summer final, while Syracuse will place North Carolina's in the other. And while basketball season is over for many KU fans, the wait isn't long for more local sports to cheer for. The Major League Baseball season is just around the corner, and the World Series champions Kansas City Royals will be back in action next week. The KU baseball team suffered a real snow out after losing the first two games of the series to Big 12 Rivers with West Virginia yesterday's games was canceled after three inches of snow fell in the Lawrence uh, area. Kansas was now 7 and 13 overall and 0 and 2 in the conference. The Jayhawks will host Missouri State at 6 p.m. on Tuesday before heading to Baylor this weekend. That's going to wrap up the news segment for today. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week. Thank you.